Today's video focuses on linear interpolation. Interpolation is a direct application of curve fitting and is an incredibly helpful tool in the engineering world. In fact, many built-in MATLAB solvers heavily utilize interpolation. We often use interpolation when we're given the dataset and we need to find some value that's not explicitly listed. From this table, we're only given x in increments of 1. But this can be problematic if we need to find, say, the y value for x equals 2.5, which clearly is not listed in the table. There are many ways to interpolate between points. We can fit lines, parabolas, cubic polynomials, and higher order polynomials, but I'll focus on linear interpolation in this video. You can find the interpolated value f of b at a point b within a dataset in three steps. First, we pick the two closest surrounding points to b. I'll call them a and c. Next, we fit a straight line between a and c. Finally, we evaluate f of b from similar triangles. I'll go through each of these steps using the data from this slide and the previous slide. For step 1, we need to find the two closest surrounding points, a and c. Let's say we choose b equals 2.5. This means that we should pick a equals 2 and c equals 3. I've shown a in red and c in blue, along with their corresponding y values. I'd like to note that a and c should bracket b. If a and c don't encapsulate b, you're now solving an extrapolation problem, which is an entirely different class of problem. For step 2, we fit a straight line between a and c. This is a really simple curve fitting problem for linear interpolations, but gets more complex as you increase the interpolation order. After we've drawn the line, we use similar triangles to find f of b. I won't go through all the math here, but you end up with this equation, which can be easily implemented into MATLAB. If you plug in all the values, you end up with f of b equals 6.5. This turns out to be the average of f of a and f of c, which should make sense because b is the average of a and c. This leads to a really convenient property of linear interpolation. Because we are linearly interpolating, you can deduce your answer just based on the location of b relative to a and c. For example, let's say b equals 2.2 instead of 2.5. The distance between a and b is 0.2, and the distance between b and c is 0.8, so b is 4 times closer to a than it is to c. If you use the formula on the previous slide, you'll find that f of b equals 5.6. The distance between f of b and f of a is 0.6, and the distance between f of b and f of c is 2.4, so we see that f of b is also 4 times closer to f of a than it is to f of c. Linearity will guarantee that this so-called distance ratio is preserved in the output. And now I'd like to take a brief aside. You might have learned how to interpolate using a linear system of equations. To get technical, the A matrix in this setup is specifically called a van der Mond matrix. There's really nothing wrong with this approach for the purposes of ME2004, but this method may not be too reliable in practical applications since the Vandermond matrix happens to be incredibly sensitive to small changes. I won't get into the nitty gritty, but you can read about the matrix condition number online if you're curious. You might even see interpolation through a method called recursive finite differences, which is also a linearization scheme. And finally, some food for thought. The linear interpolation formula uses a finite difference approximation of dy dx. Where have we seen this? On the same note, finite difference approximations are derived from the Taylor series. What happens if you add more terms of the Taylor series to the interpolation formula? And lastly, if you decrease the interval between data points, the approximation improves. This should be pretty intuitive. So why don't we just make the interval as small as possible? These are some things to think about when interpolating. And that's it for this video. See you soon.